Even as recent as 10 years ago, if you had approached someone in Hollywood with an idea for an Armageddon-style movie where a hurricane spins up off the coast of Mexico and in a matter of only a few days makes its way all the way across Florida and into the Carolinas where it floods entire valleys to the extent that no one can even get in to begin any kind of a rescue mission, I think they would have said, you know what, that's probably a, too unbelievable for any audience to really be entertained by. Well, that's our reality now. It's one of those times when I wish I had been wrong about what was coming. At least 52 dead and millions still without power after, after Helene's deadly march across southeastern United States. Now, I'm sure people are going to watch this video and the count's going to go up. Right now, it's quarter after 6 p.m. Saturday, 28th of September. It's just unreal what this storm did. But I do think it's kind of ironic that over the last, I guess, 10 to 20 years, so many people have turned to the internet looking for truth, looking for something beyond what the mainstream media was reporting. And I just kept thinking of Gollum talking about wanting a fish, give it to us raw and wriggling, kind of like the truth. Sometimes it's not always so pleasant. If you would like the unpleasant, unvarnished truth, join us at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. It's Battlefield of the Mind. Sometimes we get used to things being a little bit too polished, a little bit too perfect. And when things like this get ugly, when we see the real truth of what's happening, it can be disturbing, but... It is key to going forward, knowing the real truth. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one single U.S. dollar per month. That's for the vast majority of videos. Hundreds of videos over there, never before seen on YouTube. Fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. If it's not for you, there's a $5 level as well. Same thing applies. There's a small handful of videos for those folks, and I will warn you, over there... We can take the gloves off and we can speak and show images that you'd never get away with here at YouTube. I think people have lost track of how far the censorship has gone. Now, beyond what's happened here in the Southeast, there's a much larger story going on. And I'd like to actually, and I'm not being facetious here in the least, I'd like to ask my audience a question. And it's not a philosophical question. It's not a rhetorical question. It's an actual qu question. I remember back in the 1980s when the air controllers were going to strike. Ronald Reagan ordered them back to work because of, well, national security issues. He said, if you don't get back to work, we are going to put the military in there and take over the airports with the military why would that not apply to the ports shouldn't somebody step in and say look this is a matter of national security keeping our ports open and our ports running it's not an issue for money get back to work we'll figure the contract out but there's no hiccup now running along parallel with this countries all around the world are dropping trade in the dollar. The U.S. dollar, of course, being the world reserve currency. Many people don't understand that when country A, not the U.S., and country B, not the U.S., want to do international trade because the dollar is the reserve currency, both countries have to take their currencies and then convert them into dollars, do their trade in dollars, and then convert back. A lot of people don't realize that, and many people have, many people, meaning many other countries, have realized that this is a great way for the U.S. to exert an unhealthy amount of control on the direction of their countries, and so they've begun to de-dollarize. Now, Florida Maquis, you said you had a question. I don't understand Donald Trump's position on this. 
for a couple of different reasons. Trump threatens to punish de-dollarization. I would, I would not allow countries to go off the dollar. I would not allow countries to go off the dollar. I, you know, I must say it. I know people don't like to hear anything negative about Mr. Trump, but that's hubris. Since when do countries of the world have to bend the knee and bow to the United States? If we're truly the home of freedom and liberty and democracy and all this other great stuff, this is tyranny. I would not allow. Who gave any president the authority to tell some other country what currency they can use to do trade with any other country? Now, I can understand the concept of if you want to buy American goods, if you want to buy American goods, then yes, of course, take your take your currency, convert it to dollars, do whatever, and then with whatever other country, that's fine. But that's not what he's saying. Donald Trump told countries, you leave the dollar, you're not doing business with the United States because we're going to put a 100% tariff on your goods. Now, what makes me really, really not understand this is that this was Obama's policy. And this even CNN got this right back in 17. Obama got tough on China, and at that time, CNN was all for it, and it cost the U.S. jobs and raised prices. Conservatives were all over Obama for this because it's anti-free market. See, there's free market, free trade, and fair trade, and there's little delineations in between. Tariffs are never a good idea because of the unseen effects. And if we're in a place now where we can have people hold our country hostage for better pay, bringing things in, this is not a time to be poking the bear, so to speak. I truly don't understand Donald Trump's position on, on this because it's been tried before. It was tried by Barack Obama before, and it failed. See, initially, initially it it looked like it was going to work, but then long-term, all of the side effects made it a net negative. See, there's a lot of folks out there, and I'm one of them, that go to the grocery store, and you've got to make choices. You've got to say, okay, what's on sale this week? It's not about going to the grocery store anymore and getting what you want, maybe a few things, but the vast majority of the staples, what's on sale this week? What's buy one, get one free this week? But there is something worse. They're not being options. They're not being choices. And I know this bothers a lot of people, but I'm going to reiterate it again. I don't know what our parents would have said or grandparents would have said, mine are long gone, if I had tried to relate to them the idea that there are women having to engage, educated women, mind you, educated women with degrees, engage in softcore pornography online just to be able to afford groceries. Just to be able to afford groceries. Not to drive around in a sports car. Not because they have a drug habit. Not because they just don't have any morals. And we have the ability in, the, in this country to fix it. But because there's a certain... Por a certain group in the media who are bought off by big business that have a vested interest in demonizing something that worked quite well in this country during World War II, rationing and price controls. See, they don't want you to know the truth about this. You watch Fox News and you watch all the right, oh, we can't have this, oh, we'll be Venezuela, all this, close, all this stuff. It didn't destroy our country in World War II when we had rationing and price controls and we had top ceiling prices and we were what we call now is, of course, you know, the, the free market back then was called the black market. 
it worked. I don't know why no one has brought this up. It's, it's not an experiment that we can look at from some other country somewhere 100 years ago and say, well, they tried this thing then and then it caused this and this all happened. We have experience with this in this country. There might even still be people alive that could relate the story of how this worked. You see this picture here with the, up here in the upper left? They're showing this, this older, very wealthy woman who's taken advantage of they're not being rationing, they're not being price controls, and she buys up all of the one thing that she knows everybody needs because she's got a whole bunch of money. Now, is she going to use all that and just let this person go without? No. What they're going to do is they're going to go take and stockpile all this stuff, and then they're going to go sell it on the black market for twice as much as what it would normally go for in the store. Now, that's easily stopped, and you're left... Well, how did we get here from talking about this? Well, when the power's out and an emergency hits and people need things, we institute price controls and rationing in Florida all the time. We have many laws on the books. And it doesn't destroy Florida's economy. And there's this is not technically a picture from Florida, but it shows that when things, catastrophic things like this happen, which I could make the argument that what happened in 2020 was catastrophic, far worse long-ranging effects than what this flood will be, and that we have countries around the world dropping our currency left and right, and we might have all the East Coast ports shut, I would say all that qualifies as an emergency. You being able to have groceries, be able to feed yourself, feed your loved ones, that qualifies. Stopping this, I think, by itself could, at least our grandparents would have thought this was an emergency. It can be done. And you're like, well, these are, these are advertisements. These are artist representations. Is there any evidence? Yeah. This is an actual... United States of America Office of Price Administration rationing board sheet from the war. And it says our ceiling prices. The government has said this is the maximum we may charge for these things. We could charge less. We might charge less. But this is the maximum. And it worked. It worked. This All this bullshit you're seeing on the news about, oh, it'll cause this and it'll cause that and it'll be way worse. No. And I can prove it. Out of all of the issues that we have had, going all the way back to COVID and everything else, supply chain hiccups, has anybody heard of anyone saying, gosh, we just can't get liquor this week? Or man, you know, liquor, so we can't afford to... No. There was no shortage ever. There were limits on what? Frozen pizzas and pasta sauce. Who remembers all that? All the things they put, oh, you know, quite limit, you can only buy two. Why were there never any limits primarily on produce or on liquor? You would think it would affect everything equally. And you would think if we were suffering financially, that all these big corporations would be taking it on the chin too. But what do we know about the stock market? It's through the roof. Six largest publicly traded oil companies made more than $70 billion in profit in 90 days. People, you know, it's not inflation, kids. It's not inflation. Mr. Trump, you know, like I said, let me clear. I'm not voting for Kamala Harris. I'm just saying I don't understand his position because that's something that you would see in a democratic socialist country. Price controls, or pardon me, not, uh, tariffs and price controls. 
but he says that out of one side of his mouth, and then out of the other side of his mouth, he, he rails against Venezuela this, Venezuela that, Venezuela the other. You see, it's, it's the cause and effect thing. I tried to explain that what happened in Venezuela was a result not of socialism, but of a U.S. attack on their economy using the dollar. They used the dollar to destroy their currency and forced them to, in a limited way, move away from the boulevard, and now they have a lot of cryptocurrency down there, but they've had to dollarize somewhat, forcibly dollarize, and now things are better. They're still socialist. They're just socialists using the dollar. And that's why countries, many of them, I think it's up to 20 now, 20 different, there's reports rolling around about 150. There was a, a meeting where there were 150 participants at the meeting, and all of those participants came from 20 countries. 20 countries have agreed. And they're major ones, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and other major countries to get away from the dollar because it's been weaponized. So when you see these pictures, they're not fleeing socialism. They're fleeing the remnants of weaponized dollar attacks, which is exactly what caused the problems in Venezuela. See, I, I just don't get it. I, I, and maybe I'm just dumb. I don't know. But the U.S. controls the drilling of oil, the shipping of oil, the storing it, the refining it, the buying, the selling, the trading, the taxing of it. And then they say that, well, you know, oil prices are what they are. I mean, we have to roll with the punches and OPEC this and OPEC that. And it's just, it's just not a, you know, sometimes it's raw and wriggling. I guess the truth it has to be that way. And you can look this up online. It's uh, sorry about that. Here's a, a video it says, a, and it's a fairly large channel. They probably should, um, well, looks like they, they've adjusted the title here. BRICS confirms 159 participants from 20 countries will adopt new payment system. And what they're getting away from is something called SWIFT. Um, something, something international financial transactions system. It's what they used to sanction, try to sanction Russia and destroy Russia to, to kick them off that system, but they've just adapted to a new way of doing things. But fresh U.S. tariffs on China split EU Social Democrats along Franco-German divide. And you can look up Obama tire tariffs and see how it was an, an abject failure. Every conservative at the time was railing against Barack Obama for what Donald Trump wants to do now. It was an Obama idea. And it was even, but Obama got tough on China, you know, make China make it, you know, pay its fair share. And, you know, they're killing us on trade deals. This is exactly the point Barack Obama was making. And even CNN admitted that it eventually cost us jobs and raised the prices of things. This is uh, Forbes, Obama's half-truth on China tire tariffs. 2009 tire tariffs cost U.S. consumers $926,000 per job saved and led to the loss of three retail jobs per factory job saved. You see, that's kind of the, yes, there were some winners and some losers, but it was a net loser. And this is the, uh, the American Enterprise Institute that analyzed this. So, 20 minutes. I will leave it there. It's an honest question, guys. Wanted to give a quick shout-out again to Lynn Liaz. Um, she's up in Ohio. And she put out a new video today. And it's really very, very, very... Most of her stuff is really good. But this one's especially well done. Um... She's kind of been going on an old Star Trek kick lately, and it looks like whoever is doing her graphics and her video making is absolutely spectacular.
So give her, you know, check out her, um, her channel. She's been around for a long, long time. Um, I know I talk about these different channels a lot, but you know, these are the channels that I was watching on YouTube years and years ago. Lindley Oz and um, Lisa Haven and Patriot Nurse. I mean, they go back to the, the very beginning of, of the truth movement on YouTube. The early years of Obama. Um, seems like forever ago. You know, going on 15, 16 years ago. It's hard to believe. But anyway, give this a quick check out. Um, it's going to be a neat series coming up. Star, a Star Trek-based prophecy show. So, anyway, we'll leave it there. Um, also, could sure use your help these guys these days, guys. It's uh, it's getting rough. It really is. One U.S. dollar. That's it. One dollar a month. And like I said, dollar a month. It comes out the same day, whatever day you sign up. And you've got months and months and months to, to check everything out. And if it's not for you, it's just a quick over there. You can inbox me privately over there. Say, hey, you know what? It's not for me. Can I get a refund? No problem. Click a couple buttons right back at you. Nothing lost. So give it a shot. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Pray for those up in Appalachia and over on the west coast of Florida and Georgia. It's just unreal. It's just beyond anything even Hollywood could dream up. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.